So, hi, I'm Paul Binney. Um, I'm a Scottish artist who now lives in London, but I trained in Japan for six years in Japanese woodblock printmaking. Well, my first interest in woodblocks was really um, fundamentally as a collector, because in fact I started to collect woodblock prints when I was uh, a student. Um, at that time, obviously, I didn't have very much money, but I started to collect the cheaper end of ukiyo-e. And then in 1993, which is obviously exactly 20 years ago now, I decided to go to Japan and learn the techniques of woodblock printmaking. The technical aspect is very, it's very basic, but you have to learn the right way to do it. There are many wrong ways to do it, but it's good to learn the right way to do it. The right way to do it, in my mind, is what was done in the past. So to go from the historical techniques of the 18th and 19th century, um, introducing some modern techniques, perhaps, but, but mostly based on the way that it was done in the past. Well, some of them are, are fairly simple and they take perhaps only six weeks. But unfortunately, some of them are very complex. And obviously, the more colors that are involved, the, the longer the process. The last one I did, which was released in uh, November 2012, had 47 colors, which is quite mad. Um, and the one that I'm working on at the moment has about 52 colors, which is, which is even crazier. The image uh, behind me here is um, Yoshitoshi's ghost and it forms uh, part of a series of prints which are all based on tattoo designs. The tattoo is a, a very traditional motif in Japanese prints. It appears throughout the 18th and 19th century. Um, but I've taken the motif of tattoos and played with the idea. And it, this series, Edozumi Hyakushoku, which means 100 shades of ink of Edo, is definitely a series where I've been playing games. Because every design has um, a tattoo, which is drawn at, from at least one print by the named artist, and then quite often two or three prints. Um, the one here of uh, Yoshitoshi's ghosts, the basic image is from uh, a print of Yoshitoshi's which shows uh, a court lady facing up to a goblin character. And uh, I imagine the stage a moment after that face-off, which doesn't happen in the true story, where the goblin has ripped off the court lady's head. And of course that isn't really part of the story, but I thought it would make quite a good bloody and quite gruesome image as a tattoo. The idea of uh, Bijin is not gender specific because the, the character for Jin or Shito is a person. So it means a beautiful person rather than a beautiful woman. Um, and there, of course, when you can see uh, the, the tattoo on a body of a man, it's as attractive as a tattoo on a body of a woman. It's, a, it's the same beauty. For me, there's no difference. And the um, beauty series that's on my left side um, is one that I started quite a few years ago. But this was one where I took a beauty without necessarily showing her face to be beautiful. So, you know, you can imagine what she looks like without seeing her face, because the important aspect here is that you feel the emotion of the girl and that it gives you a bit more than just a pretty girl in a pretty kimono. So the print here that I'm um, standing beside is uh, a print called Veranda, Engawa, and uh, it was one of the first um, female nude prints that I did in a series which included uh, tattoo and non-tattoo versions. And interestingly, the tattoo version of this print is called Utamaru no Shunga, which has a Shunga print by Utamaru on the body. And so it's quite appropriate that it should be hanging in the company of other Utamaru prints. For me, I was drawing not only on the idea of uh, a pretty girl of today, but also maybe some reference back to Utamaru and the artists of the Golden Age of Ukiyo-e. Because of all the periods of of Ukiyo-e, that's what I like the most. Prints from about 1780 through to about 1810, roughly, the end of the 18th century, really, I think, are the, the most interesting prints for me. And above all, Utamaro is my, my favorite artist of the Ukiyo-e period. I think he's so elegant and so refined and he has a way of taking things that are perhaps 
fairly ordinary and elevating them to something extraordinary. Like the print that's paired with my print here of the farmer's wife. In real life, she would probably not be particularly attractive, but he's managed to take somebody who is not very stylish or very high class and make a beautiful image from her. And I think that was uh, Utamara's great gift, that he was able to transform things that are perfectly mundane and perfectly ordinary and make them into something really quite wonderful. I think I'm roughly up to about 140 something prints now. So it's taken me 20 years to get to that point, but um, I think we'll keep pushing and keep pushing. We'll try to get to 200 eventually.